Hello, hello everyone and welcome back to the forexbot.com live trading examples on the real trading account. And today we will be looking at GBP NSD currency pair on the one minute chart. Before we get started, I would like to remind you that all the information presented in this video is for educational purpose only and should not be considered as a financial advice. Today we will be looking at the strategy with the Bollinger Bands. And I will enter the trade because we just had an entry signal. I will go with the three lots. Actually, our entry signal should have been slightly higher, but it doesn't matter since we just missed a few pips on this trade. Now, the entry for this signal is based on two indicators. First is the Bollinger Band with a period of 150. Make note of that because standard period for Bollinger Bands is 20. We are using 150. Another indicator would be the Fibonacci retracement. The Fibonacci actually gives us a level of entry along with the Bollinger Band. Overall, we have three conditions for our entry. First is a divergence. You can see that we here have a divergence on the MACD indicator. The MACD comes with the standard settings which is 12, 26, and 9. Fibonacci retracement level, we are using 88.6% retracement level, and the Bollinger Band is 150 period. These are the three indicators that we're using. You can use it on different time frames. It's up to you. But overall, what we need to see is the rejection of the Fibonacci along with the Bollinger Band. And once I saw that price failed to close above 88.6, this was my entry. This gave me a signal to sell because price failed to go any higher and this is very good for the entry. And besides, multiple times I've been asked as to how to capture tops and or bottoms. Although this is a very risky approach and we definitely shouldn't underestimate the power of the trend, this trading approach still can be used very effectively. With the counter trend trading, our stop loss has to be very tight. This is how you trade the counter trend. Because if you have a huge stop loss in relation to your target, this can easily wipe out your account very, very fast. And this is the reason why I'm using extremely tight stop losses with the counter trend trading. Because if the market now will go higher than the previous high, this will actually invalidate my trade setup because we will have a breakout of the Bollinger Band and 88.6% retracement. For this reason, I'm placing the stop loss 5 pip above this level. It seems huge 5 pips, but if we would take, for example, euro versus dollar, it would be something like 2 pips. On cable NSD is much more volatile and that's why I'm putting 5 pips. You should consider that when choosing a currency pair to trade. The same applies, for example, for the pairs with the Japanese yen. They also tend to be quite volatile and a stop loss should be 5 pips above the previous high. Other pairs like dollar Swiss franc, New Zealand dollar versus dollar, Australian versus dollar, they all same could be about 2 pips higher than the previous high. This is enough and this is very tight. So we still have a tight stop loss and this is enough basically for us to see whether the market will continue trending or go in favor of our trade. Therefore, let's, let's place a stop loss, which we have 0671 as a high. We add five pips to that plus the spread. We need to see the spread. The spread we have here is three pips. That would make it in total eight pips. So 79 would be my stop loss. 0679. Okay, we have the stop loss in place. That is enough. Make sure if it's a sell trade, you add the spread to it. If it's a buy trade, you don't need to add the spread to your stop loss. The same applies for take profit. Once you calculate your take profit, for the sell trade, you need to add the spread. For the buy trade, obviously, you don't. Now, how we calculate our profit targets? We will be using Fibonacci retracement yet again. The profit target for this trade would be 161.8% FIPS. This is the common correction 
if we trade against the trend. At the same time, we must watch for double bottom at this area. We have this support here formed. And if price fails to go lower, we would place the stop loss at break even point in order to make our trade absolutely risk free. Now let's place our take profit. This is 2.0587 plus the spread that would make it 2.0590. Okay, now we have our target and we have our stop loss. You can see what is the risk reward ratio. It's actually quite big. Our stop loss is approximately 20 pips in total, while our target is approximately 50 pips. The risk reward for this trade is 2.5 because our potential target is two and a half times bigger than our potential risk. What we want to achieve is always the risk reward not less than 2 to 1, where our potential profit is two times higher than potential risk. This is the minimum that we should be taking. In our case, we have higher risk reward, which is even better. And when you calculate that, if, for example, your target at 161.8 would not make risk reward 2 to 1, you would need to use second Fibonacci, which would be 261.8. Make sure to calculate your targets appropriately. Don't trade with the risk reward ratio 1 to 1. This will be extremely risky. Now I would like to summarize on this trade what we have. It's a one minute chart, pound New Zealand dollar. Our potential target is approximately 50 pips, while our stop loss is approximately 20 pips. On the chart, we have three indicators. One is MACD, second is Bollinger Band with 150 period, and third one is the Fibonacci. We have double Fibonacci indicator on the chart in order to get our entry point as well as target. For now, let's wait, see what happens. I will update you soon once we have some price action in place on this chart. Okay, guys, we are back to our trade. And what we can see currently is that pound is rejecting 127 Fibonacci retracement. At the same time, there is a support also rejected. So I'm very cautious as to what happens. But what we have now, we already reached our risk reward ratio 2 to 1. And therefore, I'm going to capitalize on our trade. I just closed the trade with the profit. It doesn't matter if it goes above or below. We have reached the risk, the minimum risk reward two to one. And with this trade, we have managed to make $892. This was trade that has lasted just less than two hours. There is less than two hours and we already made a very nice profit. Now let's summarize. Our risk has been 20 pips and we have made 48 pips profit with the current trade. The risk reward obviously was more than two to one, which is very good. The trade lasted just two hours and this is all we needed. The price can go wherever it wants now. We have made our profit. We might reach the take profit eventually, but uh, I didn't want to risk because of this support being rejected. There was quite a bit of time that the price stayed there. I was watching it and it failed to go any lower. This was the warning sign and I had to exit the trade, fix the profit. So overall in two hours, we have made a huge $892 with this trade because the trade size was three lots. Now let's summarize on the rules for this trading strategy. First of all, we're looking for bullish or bearish divergence. After the divergence has been formed, we are looking for the pullback to 88.6 Fibonacci retracement. At the same time, we are looking for the area of upper band of our Bollinger Band with a period of 150. It is very important to see that there was a rejection of the 88.6% Fibonacci. We need the price to close below that level. It can spike higher but it cannot close above. This is very, very important. At the same time, we are watching the Bollinger Band and we must be on the top. For the Bollinger Band, it doesn't have to be very precise because you can see the bottoms are usually like that. And it happens very often that the price goes slightly above the Bollinger Bands. But the Fibonacci is very important to be precise. 
Once the price has rejected the Fibonacci, we enter on the next candle. The price must be near the Bollinger Band, higher or lower band, depending whether it's a sell or a buy trade. And finally, our stop loss and take profit. The stop loss, we place five pips above or below our entry, depending whether it's a sell or buy. It also depends on the currency pair. With volatile currency pairs, it is better to place five pips higher. With less volatile, two or three pips usually is enough. And the final touch is place take profit. We're using the correctional wave where we enter the trade and place our target at 161.8% Fibonacci retracement level. It can also be 127.2% retracement level. It all depends on the risk reward ratio. The main thing is always have it not less than 2 to 1, where your risk is twice smaller than your potential profit. We have achieved this goal even at 127.2% FIPS, and we had this massive support which has been holding, and this is the reason I had to exit the trade earlier. We could have placed the take profit here, and even if we would place the take profit at risk reward 2 to 1, we would hit it without even monitoring the trade. But I wanted to get more out of this trade, and we did manage to get slightly more. So that's it for today. Thank you for watching. It was a very nice trading setup. Uh, only two hours and huge $892 we have cashed with this trade. Thanks for watching. And if you want to see more videos like that, don't forget to like this video and subscribe to our channel. Thanks for watching and I wish you a profitable trading.